All right, welcome guys. Let's do some painting. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna mark our center. Uh, then we're gonna grab our masking tape and we're gonna just stick that right in the middle there. This is to ensure that we have a nice evenly measured left and right side of the painting. So now we're gonna grab our palette. We have some blue, red, yellow, and white, just primary colors. We're gonna start by the left side, adding the white paint, and you're gonna put a good amount, so don't be afraid to put a good amount on there. It's acrylic paint, so it does dry fast. So the more you put and the quicker you work, the better it's gonna be. Uh, just make sure you kind of evenly distribute that along the left side. Once you have a nice evenly balanced coating, you're gonna grab a little bit of the blue, starting from the top, gonna blend that down. So the white on there is blending with that blue, creating a nice gradient, misty sky background, which is what we're going for. Something simple, something cool to kind of replicate that cool winter atmosphere. So just gradually add a little bit of blue at a time. You don't wanna put a lot, just a very little bit. Gonna, gonna blend in really nicely with that white. So just kind of keep blending using some cross cross motions, just going horizontally until you're satisfied. We're gonna clean our brush right after that. We're gonna do the right side. First, you're gonna take off the tape. And you have this beautiful, nice straight line. Uh, we will end up blending it a little bit on the top though, just to kind of merge it into the right side. So same way as the left, you're gonna start with the white paint, nice, evenly distributed coat. Put a good amount on there. You don't want it to dry, you want it to be nice and wet still when you go into the color. This is to ensure that it blends really nicely. Lay it on there. Now the middle center, you don't have to worry about too much about it because we're gonna have the tree there, so you won't even see that. Just keep putting that white on there. Brush, brush, brush. All right, and then we're gonna end up going into our yellow and red. We're gonna make like a nice orangey, warm tone. So starting from the top as well, we're going to blend that down, um, doing a little bit at a time, blending in with that white, creating a nice warm spring, bright day, using some crisscross motions, going horizontally, blending that in nicely, something simple, light, nothing too crazy. Beautiful, so keep blending that in so you're kind of happy with that. Now you can add more white if you need to, if it starts to dry, like on the bottom or something, feel free. I mean, that's totally fine. The, the, white, the more white you put, the easier it'll be to blend. All right, so next we're gonna do the tree. We're gonna mix the brown and the black. Pretty much equal parts too. So one part brown, one part black. And we're gonna start with the center, make our line. That's going to be our trunk. I'm going to bring it over to the left and the right. So the left side, I kind of just kept like pretty smooth and just some, some little bumps, like as if there was snow, because we're going to make some snow on there. And then on the right side, we kind of made some grass. So you're going to just kind of wisp up that brush. You're going to go up. Yep. So just very light, like a feather, as you go up to create that grass effect. And then we're gonna make our big branches. We have the big brush, so we're gonna start with our big branches. You don't wanna start doing the smaller branches with this brush. You wanna just keep, keep going with the big stuff first, big shapes. So the right side, we're gonna have a bunch of flower, bloomed flowers on the tree. So, or you can do leaves, it's totally up to you. You can totally change these colors. So we're gonna just make our big shapes, big branches. Just, you know, just, be the tree, you know, just, if you need to look at some pictures of some trees, to, if that's helpful, feel free. I mean, I definitely did that before I started. Remember, just do the big branches. On the right side, you don't wanna do the full branches because it's gonna be covered up with the paint anyways uh, for the bloomed flowers. So once you have the big shapes done, you're gonna go switch over to a smaller brush. And I used, I think I ended up using a little bit too big. Yeah, I used that one first, but it was still too big and I ended up switching out. 
to something smaller. So you want to make sure it's small enough where you can just do the thinner parts of the branches. Yeah, see, it's too thick. I switched it over right now. <laughs> That's the thing about painting. You just kind of learn as you go, you know, it's trial and error most of the time. So we're still using that same color, the brown and the black. We're just making, building up our tree branches, adding some more. Now every time you have a new branch, another one can pop up from that branch, and then another one from that branch. So you have this like fractal effect. Like I said, you know, looking at pictures is, for reference is, is really helpful uh, when you're doing nature, um, observing the trees in, in nature, you know, going for a hike or something is even better. Taking photos yourself. So we're just kind of build up this tree. Just keep building it up. It's really fun too, making the branches and kind of just let the branch, let the brush do the work. Uh, try not to be too stiff with it. Uh, the more squiggly and twisty you can make it, the cooler it's going to be, the more character it'll have. So I ended up switching to an even smaller, a thinner brush actually. So. Just kind of keep adding those ends there, adding those ends there. Smaller and smaller brushes. And that's how nature works, really. You start with the big trunk, the one, the one big branch, and then you have smaller branches emerging from there, and then smaller branches emerging from them, and then smaller branches emerging from them. It just keeps going until you have these beautiful buds and flowers and leaves, which will be the right side. Left side is in hibernation. It's not dead, it's just resting. And just keep going. This part's really fun. I think this is my favorite part. <clears throat> It's nice to use in the smaller paintbrush because you can just build it up. Um, it's easier to build up than take away, that's for sure. On the right side, we're still keeping it pretty minimal and simple just because we're gonna have a bunch of leaves and, and whatnot there, so it'll be blocked in with color. Um, so we're just kind of making indications of branches in there. Kind of like peeking through. Because you don't want it to be too solid uh, when you put that color. All right, so now we're making the, the right side the foliage. <clears throat> and I used a paper towel, kind of made it into a ball. And I grabbed the red paint. I'm going to evenly distribute that as well. And then you just kind of going to dab away and, and make some shapes. Uh, this part's also really fun. So try not to just keep thrown it on there without thinking about the shapes that you want and the shape of the tree itself as a whole. Um, so once you get, once you block this color in, just, just consider that. I'm going to put a decent amount too, but we're going to layer more on top of it anyways. This is kind of like the base layer. All right, so now we have that shape. And if you mess up and put some spots somewhere, that's okay. There's no mistakes, just happy accidents per Bob Ross. So we're going to turn that little speck of pink down below into a flower. Awesome. So there is our basic setup of the tree. Left side winter, right side spring. Now we're going to bring some life to the left side of that tree. And I just started by mixing the white, the black, and the brown together. But you'll see in a second that I ended up making it a little too gray and a little too bright at first. I wanted to start with more of the mid-tone of the color of the tree. So I just added more of the brown and then more of the black uh, until I was satisfied with the color. So when you're doing the, the um, when you're doing the bark, uh, you definitely want to kind of build it up and go in layers. So I'd like to start with the mid tone, and then from there we're going to go up to the highlight. Now consider that this is the left side, so it's kind of be it's going to be more cool. Uh, so in winter the trees are they look dead, but they're really not dead. They're just they're in hibernation. So it doesn't, it doesn't like there's no, I don't know, I guess on the right side is more sunlight, it's brighter, it's warmer. So the left side's gonna be more cool. So we're gonna just kind of stick with that theme on the left side and the right side will be more bright. Now on the right side, I started to go a little crazy with the highlights at first, um, but 
beauty of painting is you can just keep layering it on, layering it on, and eventually it starts to feel more like bark. Uh, the more I put on, I'll I'll put the the mid tone, then I'll put some highlight, then I'll go back with the black and the brown, the dark dark, um, and kind of like fix that a little bit, and make it just more um, make it look more like bark. Um, it's a lot of dry brushing. So what dry brushing is, um, you have a little bit of paint on the brush, nothing too crazy, and then you're just gonna brush that on to the canvas, not applying too much pressure, but what happens is when you're dry brushing, it creates this nice effect where it's not a full brush stroke, like a solid brush stroke, and it breaks it apart, which is similar to what bark looks like. Now, if you look in the center on the left side, you can see that it's like, it's kind of like broken apart. Um, and it definitely resembles bark, which is really cool. So that's dry brushing. It's just a small amount of paint on that brush. Now we're gonna go to the right side. We're gonna add some warmer highlights. So I added some yellow. And we're just gonna go in there and start laying it on, dry brushing as well. So it's just a small amount of paint on that brush. And you're just gonna bring it in, lay it on, let it break apart. I went back with the dark uh, just to add some more shadows. I think it needed more shadows just to indicate some more depth of the branches. And I added like this cool hole in there. And you can just kind of keep adding whatever you want, make this your own tree, you know, add character. Now we're doing the snow. So I just make it not pure white, but it kind of like a, a darker, like a grayish white. Uh, for the first layer, we're going to bring it up into the tree as if the snow was, the wind was bringing the snow onto the tree. And the beauty with starting with the black background for the bottom, for the foreground, is you get these really nice um, shadow areas without really trying too hard. It's, it's really nice for beginners or even intermediate. It's just very helpful. We're going to add some snow on the branches too. So wherever you see like wherever snow would land, uh, you're just gonna put that, it's like a gray, it's not pure white yet, because we're gonna add the white as the highlight. So this is just kind of grayish. Um, so you're just adding a little bit of black to the white and then putting it on that on the uh, branches where it would kind of fall and sit. Add some texture, you know, it's not perfect. Snow is not gonna be laying perfectly. So you just kind of add a little texture, add a little bit to the, tr to the tree itself. You know, it was a windy day and the snow was just falling and flying and getting all over the place. Then I went in and um, added some more white just to kind of give it some more highlight. And just, you know, have fun with this. Just keep putting it on wherever you want to put snow, put the snow. We're going to go with the highlights on the foreground as well on the bottom. And then I ended up adding some snow falling. You can do that. You can choose not to. It's totally up to you. But I thought it would be pretty fun. Actually, what I wish I could have done now is made the snow fall in a different direction. Maybe do some swirls or something, kind of like a Van Gogh style. I think that'd be cool. Just to indicate that the wind was so, you know, it was so windy where it was getting onto the tree trunk. It was just such a cool, cold day. So as you can see, the left side is definitely a lot colder and cooler than the right side, which is exactly what we're going for. So then I add, I add um, some rocks, uh, just some more shapes and life to it. And then I add a snowman because why not? Uh, you can choose not to, it's totally up to you. You can add whatever you want to, to any of this really. Uh, then I'm just going to add some highlights. Now the paint's a little too wet at this moment, so I'm going to just leave it alone for a minute and we'll go back um, to do the highlights as soon as we're done with the right side. So moving on to the right side, we're going to grab some green. We're going to do the grass. So you're just going to grab the green, a little bit of the black. We're doing that mid-tone first. Oh, I forgot I did that first. Yeah, I wanted to add some green to the left side as if like, you know, spring wants to emerge almost there all right so we add that green right to that black bottom i think I, this is just the pure green actually and you're going to go up and uh short 
straight up brush strokes. Now you're gonna, it's kind of making it wispy at the end. You wanna go straight up, wispy and grass-like. <laughs> you're gonna just keep going until you get that base color down on there. Very simple, very, very simple. And we're gonna go in with a smaller paintbrush. <clears throat> And we're gonna add our um, stems to our flowers. So I added a little bit of black to the green just to darken it up a little bit, just to give it some shadow. Then we're gonna add the highlights after. So you're just gonna keep putting, it's a field of flowers. And I thought spring flowers, I did a bunch of tulips. Um, you can do whatever flowers you want. It's kind of more impressionistic anyways. There's not too much detail when we do the flowers itself. So it's, it's fun, you know, make some leaves, some stems going every which way, make sure you alternate which way it's, it's kind of leaning, give us some character, put some in the background, put some in the foreground, they're all scattered everywhere. And then we're gonna end up doing our tree again. So we're adding in some white, so we're doing a little more highlight, some white and some red. So it's lighter than the base color. And you want to consider the shapes here. Now you want to consider where the light's coming from as well. So the light's coming from the right side. It's kind of more like a front right, but. So you want to make sure you show some of that bottom color, that darker red color. You want to show that so it can give you that illusion of depth of the leaves or the flowers on the tree. Now we're going to go back and end up adding more. Um, but first we're going to do our flowers so i just add just the base colors i do some orangey yellow and you're pretty much just putting little blobs on there it's nothing too detailed it's just indication that there are flowers there um, this is kind of more of a impression impressionistic approach we're going to end up adding highlights to these as well just to give the illusion of depth as well and i'm, I'm a big fan of that so it's not so flat looking I just alternated colors. I did some blues and some purples and some orange and some pink. You can do whatever colors you want. You can do one color if you want. It's totally up to you. It's your painting. So now I added the highlights to the, the grass. So I just added some yellow to that green. And we're going to do the exact same motion with the paintbrush. I'm going to go up, kind of wisping it up as you go vertically, creating that illusion of grass. <clears throat> Now the left side had dried a little bit more, so I added that highlight on the um, the snowman, which lo looks a lot better. Adding some more highlight on the rock. And we're gonna make our snowman have a little face, because you know, why not? It's a little carrot nose. Like I said, you can make your snowman look however you want. I end up making the grass a little bit greener too. There we go. It also It's also nice because it, it kind of, um, correlates to the right side and then the right side will correlate to the left side with some white so it just balances out the painting as a whole so i just added the highlight to the flowers now by doing that you just add some white to the color that you use for that flower and just make it a little bit lighter and a little bit more opaque so you have this illusion that there is light bouncing off of the flower so i'm just continuing the highlights of the grass with the stems same color Add yellow to the green, going over that initial stem and, and, and um, leaves and grass. And you're just using, I'm using a smaller paintbrush for this because it's a little more detailed. Add more, you know, blades of grass for a little more detail. Make sure you want to just keep going in the upward motion, straight up. That way the thicker part of the brush stroke is at the bottom and the thinner part is at the top. All right, looking pretty good. We're gonna do some more highlights for that tree. I went in with the pink. I have a, just a pink color, just to add a little more um, color to that. So same thing, you're just gonna block that in with that, to with that paper towel, leave some openings of the colors underneath it. Don't cover it all, show those branches underneath show some sunlight behind it you can go back in with the red if you find that you went a little overboard with the pink which i think i did 
So I'm just adding a little more depth to it, adding some more darker tones. And always step back to look at it as a whole. If you don't do that, you kind of get too caught up in the detail. So just step back, look at it as a whole, look at the shapes, and then go back in and do what you need to do. So when I finally go back in with more highlight, I end up adding some white to the pink. I, like I said, you can change the color of the tree. If you don't want pink blossoms on your tree, that's totally fine. You can do just like green, like it's just blooming a regular tree with no flowers. I ended up adding in some details and I made a bird with a little bird's nest and the black and brown, some little bees buzzing around the flowers. I was pretty happy with it, but then I ended up going back in and making those, making a little more, some more highlights. So we're just going in, adding some more highlights to that. I end up adding some white to the pink, uh, making it a little bit brighter, a little bit more opaque. Also, the white kind of corresponds back over to the left side. Um, I warmed up the tree trunk a bit too, clearly. I think it needed to be a little bit warmer just to really separate the left from the right side a little bit more. Beautiful. There's some more some brighter highlights. I end up going in after this video and put some more uh, tree branches. Little ones just kind of stemming off from the right side, just kind of poking out. And there you have it, guys, a uh, painting in honor of the vernal equinox, the change of the season from winter to spring, my favorite time of the year, other than fall and summer. I guess I like every season. Uh, if you have any questions or if you want to book a paint party, you can reach me at Kayla's creating at gmail.com. You can find more of my work at Kayla's creating.com. Or you can check out my Instagram, follow me, like me, share me, all that jazz at Kayla's Creating. Thanks for watching, guys, and happy painting.